science, bad science, but the enormity of this grand experiment is not yet known. We're starting to see some things. We're seeing that children, that, that a fetus gestating during a period of time when atrazine is highest in our environment, ha, are tend to have genital defects. Atrazine, atrazine, that chemical num We hear Monsanto selling themselves as a food company, but they've been around 100 years as a chemical company. Chemstrand. A chemical company. Yep. Now, the chemical atrazine is found in human breast milk. Uh, Tyrone Hayes, who's mentioned before, is in quite a few studies that have shown that, that amphibians that are exposed to atrazine um, are gender bending. Males, and it tends to be the feminization of males. The BPA issues, the plastics in our food, these are all integrated. I and mean, this is happening now. We have epidemic of autism that no one can explain. We have an epidemic of diabetes. We have type 2 diabetes in, in children now. That is an epidemic. Early onset puberty, little girls having their, their menses at younger and younger ages, and no one knows why. It couldn't be atrazine. It couldn't be uh, the endocrine mimicking substances that are in our water, in our food supply. Why is it that the FDA has told us now, they finally agreed that no amount of trans fat should be eaten by humans? In Amsterdam, it's a crime to feed someone trans fat. But why is it in all our school lunches? This is more than just a what's good for me to eat issue. This is totally integrated into our entire society. And it's also very much a class issue. Now, it's, we live on planet Earth, and planet Earth is like an island. And it's hard to imagine that an island, even a city is like an island, a community, a neighborhood. But if you imagine, just for example, the islands of Hawaii, the islands of Hawaii, 90% of their food is imported. The beautiful, fecund garden that is Hawaii that could feed everyone in Hawaii, people will starve if one week goes by and they don't get shipments of food. And how does that food arrive? It arrives in cans. Are those cans made out of raw material mined somewhere, brought over in, in, in boats, polluting, polluting the, 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 the ocean as it even arrives? And then what do you do with it? And what about feeding that can of squash to your child that's lined with BPA, what's leaking in there? Where did that squash come from when you can't grow a squash in your backyard and how many of us know how to cook a squash so we got complicated things we got several things going on at one time at one very important part it's we need to learn how to eat food we need to cook food grow food we have the ability we don't need lawns we need gardens we can start in our own communities we can start in our own kitchens we don't need that can of squash we can just pick one out of the backyard. Anywhere where there is a median, where your tax dollars are paying for that median, and they're paying for that lawn on that median, and the, and the uh, irrigation that median, and the, the city worker to come and mow the lawn over there, that should be growing squash. If you got laid off today, pick a squash on your way home, cook it up for dinner. You don't need to go to the, the food bank and get something out of a can. <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm here to say I do I did work hard on Prop 37, and I'm continuing, Rachel, to work on 1381. But I don't have a lot of faith in the legislative system, and I don't think that our representatives in government are representing us. The fact that 37 lost by a slim margin against $46 million of advertising shows that millions of Californians want to know what is in our food. And the fact that we can't ha know what is in our food is a failure of government. Yep. What we need is not just chasing state and local and county laws, because those can also be challenged in court because there's such a thing called interstate commerce. So localities can try to pass laws and spend, and we, like, we're like busy hamsters in the wheel, just getting fatigued until they just push, push us off. What we need is a federal, federal law. We need to make the FDA responsible. Yeah. 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 It's called the precautionary rule. It's what Europe has. Because we don't know good science or bad science, but we have enough science about GMO and about atrazine to know that we don't know. 
That's why GMO is banned in Europe. That's why AstraZene's been banned since 2004. We know enough to know that we don't know. And until we have a federal precautionary rule, a federal precautionary law, we are going to continue to chase local state laws where there will be challenged in court with their millions and millions of dollars. Now, what we've already done here in the streets and in our laws and in our propositions, win or lose, is to show that millions and millions of people want to know what's in our food. And it seems like a very simple thing to me that if you're going to cross a potato and a fish, you have to prove that it's food before you feed that to someone's child. And before you feed something to your child, you should be able to know what's in it. So I encourage us all to do all three things. Cook, uh, cook locally, eat locally, grow our own food locally. That's one thing. The other thing is to continue to support this movement in the legislation. But the other thing, the third thing that we really need to do is we need to think a bigger picture and keep our eye on the prize. Because March Against Monsanto is not about one brand. It is not about just GMO. It's about the precautionary rule and that we have a right to know what's in our food. Thank you all for being out here tonight. Thank you, Mona Lisa. Thank you for all your work, especially. I wanted to introduce um, our our expert from Geo Engineering Washington who helped us out over there at climate change. Thank you for sticking out. That was that was an exciting day. This is again Dane Wigington. I hope I got it right. Did I, Dane? Thank you. <laughs> Come on up. My thanks to everybody who, who took the time to come here today. I don't know how many of you know about climate engineering. You'll hear about it soon enough. This is going on in our skies. We have a few people to do. Monsanto's intertwined with this as well. It's called geoengineering and the semantics matter. If you use the science terms, people will look at hard science. They'll find it will make them convinced. Yeah, don't hold the mic at the microphone. Okay. It's got to shorten the cord. Bad mic. You're yeah, excellent. You're excellent. You're right on the truth, bro. That's all right. Anyway, I'll deal with it. Uh, can you raise that up? That's all right. Don't do it. No, I got it. Don't worry about it. I'm good. The bottom line is this. If we can't walk out our door without breathing in heavy metals, we have a problem of the first order. People who don't think this is going on have simply not done their research, period. We've done 100 lab tests in Northern California alone. The amount of aluminum and barium, strontium, toxic heavy metals coming down in our rain is absolutely lethal. State of California now has just acknowledged that aluminum is running down the waterways, but they've made it clear they're not about to test the rain. You can't find something if you're not looking for it. So at this point, We've seen aquatic insect life decline, for example, in Northern California, 90% in 10 years as measured by U.S. Forest Service biologists. We're seeing species extinction rate today globally, 200 species of plant and animal going extinct today. Granted, there's a lot of causes for that, but the bottom line is, mathematically speaking, there's no greater cause of overall contamination on the planet with heavy metals than climate engineering. Our goal at geoengineeringwatch.org is to get people to simply investigate this issue, do research, don't operate off preconception. Governmental agencies are doing everything they can to stonewall this issue because how many people do you know that are going to be satisfied when they find out these programs are going on and we're all breathing aluminum, barium, and strontium connected to Alzheimer's, dementia, autism? How many people you know are going to be happy when they know they're breathing this and there's absolutely no question about this material being dispersed in our airways? At geoengineeringwatch.org we have film footage of these tankers dispersing at altitude and if we would argue it's shredding, it, we know it's shredding the ozone layer. How many of you feel the sun extremely warm on your face lately? A lot. It's burning the bark off of trees. It's, it's, it's killing plankton in the oceans. The bottom line is we feel mathematically, statistically, there's no greater overall assault on the planet today than geoengineering. Nuclear is very serious, obviously, and geoengineering would be the greatest and most immediate threat short of nuclear catastrophe. But the bottom line is there's nowhere you can run, nowhere you can hide from this issue. A thousand whales just tested in 2010 from the most remote places on the planet. They had, quote, jaw-dropping levels of aluminum in their tissues. I guarantee it's in every single one of you. Bottom line is we're simply trying to bring this to light. 
if, if, we do, if we don't have a planet that will support life, and if these programs continue to shred the ozone layer, disrupt the hydrological cycle, contaminate our soils, we won't grow anything. Not even a Monsanto genetically modified aluminum resistant seed will, will grow if we keep on this track. So I, I appreciate everybody's time in investigating this issue. If anybody wants a DVD or information on this issue, I, if you will put it to use, I'll give it to you. I have DVDs right back there next to the, to the geoengineering sign. If anybody will put it to good use, I will give it to you. Who are you? G My name is Dane Wiggington. I'm with the website geoengineeringwatch.org. I have a background with Bechtel Power Company in the renewable energy. That's how I got into this issue. I, my home is on the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine. When I started to lose 60, 70, 80 percent of my solar uptake from strictly what these aircraft were emitting, that's an astounding amount of sun to block. Global dimming today, a figure most people have never heard of. It's 25 percent. 25 percent of the sun's direct rays are no longer reaching, reaching the surface of the planet. Yes, pollution is a part of that. Geoengineering is a much, much bigger part of that. That is the express goal of climate engineering to block the sun at the expense of derailing the planet's life support system. So if you want to learn about this and you want a DVD and you'll put it to good use, come back there. I'll give it to you. It's on me. I simply, we're simply trying to get the word out before there's nothing left of the Earth's life support systems. All of us matter. Any one of us in this crowd could be the pebble that knocks the landslide of awareness loose and brings this issue to light. Every one of you matter. All of us need to pull together. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dan. we got some homework to do. we got a big job. we got to keep working together. Um, I want to introduce... Um, and, and a native person who has been working with us on food transparency for some time, Quana Brightman Parker. Yeah. Say hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, 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 good afternoon, my relatives. My name is Quana Parker Brightman. I'm executive director of United Native Americans. Uh, just to give a brief synopsis of the organization that I represent. Uh, we were founded here in San Francisco in the Greater Bay Area in 1968. We were involved in the takeover of Alcatraz, Wounded Knee, a couple long walks across country. We led a group one time that took over Mount Rushmore, reclaimed it for my nation, the Lakota Nation. Now, my father is one of the founders of the movement. His name is Dr. Lehman Brightman. One of the things he used to teach when he was when he was actively teaching at UC Berkeley, UC San Diego, and Contra Costa College and Sacramento State uh, was these facts of the fact of you know Native American sovereignty. And one of the things that we're talking about here today is of course Monsanto. And what I'd like to bring up um, is this fact on what we're doing, what we're dealing with right now as a movement against Monsanto, and some of the things we can do as average everyday people to combat what's going on. Now a lot's been mentioned, you know, about, you know, GMO food and of course the health the numerous health effects that are affecting all of us and specifically as far as Native American people back home on the reservation who are still living in these concentration camps that your forefathers put our people on. Yep. Now we signed three hundred and eighty nine treaties. Through 389 treaties, we gave up over 1 billion.